Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in beautiful Southwest Florida. Today I'm going to do a very short video. I know, you know, I'm like a preacher, you know, I just go on and on and on, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to try to just do a short video that makes one point is that if you have chronic occipital headaches and have been diagnosed with occipital neuralgia and none of the traditional treatments have worked, it's likely that you have upper cervical instability irritating the C2 nerve and that's what's causing your occipital neuralgia. So basically, there's a cervical plexus here in the mid neck and the key point is that you have these foramina that go out the side of the neck and it innervates the arms. But the C1 nerve and the C2 nerve don't go in these foramina. They go between the vertebrae. So the C2 nerve, which is what makes the occipital nerve, it goes between the atlas and the axis. So it goes into this space right here. So if this space is narrowed because of problems in the neck curve, because of instability, the C2 nerve is continually going to be irritated and that's going to cause occipital neuralgia. And you guys already know there's the lesser occipital nerves on the side here, the greater occipital ner nerves here, and then there's the third occipital nerve in the midline. Any sort of upper cervical instability, you might say, well, how would I know if I have upper cervical instability? Well, if you're moving your neck and doing certain things and you hear crack, crack, click, click, pop, pop, you probably have upper cervical instability. Also, if you have tightness, like you just have this tightness up here and it won't go away, well, those are your muscles clamping down, your suboccipital muscles that attach to the atlas and the axis, and they're clamping down because you have ligament damage there, and the body, uh, when there's ligament damage, will contract the muscles to stabilize the segment. So, the C2 nerve forms the greater occipital nerve, and when that gets stretched and compressed, that can give you occipital neuralgia. So this is what I talked about. The C1 nerve goes here, the C2 nerve goes there. This patient, obviously, it had a cervical fusion. But, you know, when I move and I do certain motions, that C2 space is supposed to be open, but if you have a reversal of the cervical curve. So when you have a reversal of the cervical curve, the atlas has to get extended and that narrows this C2 space. It narrows the C2 space. Also what narrows, what can narrow the C2 space is when you jut forward with your chin. So anybody with occipital neuralgia, why don't you go two, three, four, five weeks and have a conscious effort of not jutting your chin forward. So when you're looking down, just look down. You know, don't, don't go like that. Like, have your computer screen up so, you know, you don't have to jut your chin forward. Open up that C2 space or wear a cervical collar and just see if I don't move my neck, does the occipital nerve pain go way down? And if it does, it means that the cause of it is a structural neck problem which you need to get evaluated the way we do it is by digital motion x-ray digital motion x-ray so again here's the atlas here's the axis see the c2 nerve there that nerve that's what forms the occipital nerve so when you have chronic occipital neuralgia it's likely you probably have a looseness of this joint then the muscles clamp down the nerve gets stretched and compressed. So the treatment's going to be optimizing the neck curve, open up the C2 space, don't do activities like jutting the head forward, forward head lifestyle, keep the C2 nerve space open. And if you have ligament injury there in the upper cervical region, get some prolotherapy. This just kind of shows, see the C2 nerve, see it innervates basically the head. So anybody who has pain zinging into the head, it's going to be the C2 nerve, C2 nerve. There are going to be times where we inject platelet-rich plasma into the C2 nerve or we do what's called hydrodissection where we put PRP or dextrose around 
the occipital nerve and the fascial plane that the occipital nerves in, we dissect it, we inject the fluid there, which frees the nerve. We call that nerve release. There's many ways to find whether or not there's a C1, C2 problem. This is a CT scan. Sometimes CT scans can show it. Upright MRIs that are flexion extension. The simplest way is just to do a motion scan, a digital motion scan, which shows the extra motion. And then once that motion is uh, decreased by prolotherapy, by tightening the ligaments, then there's less compression stretch on the C2 nerve and the occipital nerve. This is uh, just one of our patients who had an occipital nerve stimulator. Sometimes the pain's so bad that people will have occipital nerve stimulators. Occipital nerve stimulators are sometimes used even for chronic migraines because irritation of the C2 nerve, the same nerve that forms the occipital nerve can give you migraines. So if you also have chronic migraines, you know, you probably have instability of the upper cervical region and you need, you need some prolotherapy. And these are just different motions that cause different symptoms. And you'll see here, sometimes neck extension or a mandibular protrusion can increase the symptoms of occipital neuralgia. This is kind of a detailed thing, but it says ligamentous upper cervical instability, etiology of cranial neuralgias and sensory hypersensitivity syndromes. Much of the neurology goes through the ansa cervicalis, that's that cervical plexus, the upper cervical nerve plexus. So you see here, C2 neuralgia, which can cause burning mouth. You know, we see a lot of burning mouth here or burning tongue can cause migraine headache. Remember we talked about occipital neuralgia and then C1 neuralgia, which is basically the cousin of C2 neuralgia can give you unbelievable migraines and pain around the eye. So anybody with these symptoms in addition to occipital neuralgia and has clicking, popping, grinding, of the neck, I would definitely recommend that you get prolotherapy. And if the curve is reversed, then obviously curve correction to open up the C2 space. Prognosis is very good. Like occipital neuralgia, like other neuralgias or nerve irritations has a cause. And in my experience here at the Hauser Neck Center, the cause is upper cervical instability, which needs to be treated with prolotherapy. Thank you.